the postcard. Right. Oh, you got the postcard. Oh, my gosh. Polar Bear Jump 2016 Camp Quality and Ronald McDonald House of Akron will be the recipient. We were in 2014. We had a great time with it. This was a massive, huge fundraiser for us and great community involvement. Uh, this is what makes a huge difference for us. And I jumped and I will jump again. I'll <laughs> wear my spring bikini and that's two years later, you know. But uh, it, we, it, it's fabulous and we cannot uh, thank community supporters like that enough for what they do. And again, that is all efforts, uh, resources, time, money, energy that, that people in the community uh, give of themselves to then make a difference in so many people in their lives and what they've got. I mean, that's exactly what, what drives me here. So, yeah, dude. It's probably a real tough question. All right, I like those. My question is, do you get any funding from McDonald's for the operating place, place in there. Okay. And if so, you know, how does that work? Kind of how does it work for what we're saying? I don't even have a question because I was going to ask the area to at least mention the franchise. Yes. So, so their own property. Right. <laughs> so our McDonald's relationship. The question was, what's our McDonald's relationship and our funding? Um, uh, we have a wonderful relationship with, with the market and for our, you know, with our owner operators and the co-op. So here's how it works in our market. Northeast Ohio, there's a Ronald Do or McDonald's owner operator co-op. So it's just like a region, right, for any, you know, type of business. And in Northeast Ohio, all of those owner operators work together in that co-op. We have three elements to our charity within this co-op. There's the Ronald McDonald House of Cleveland, Ronald McDonald House of Akron, and the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Northeast Ohio, which is a, a different unit. So there's three elements. That Northeast Ohio Charities are one woman office in independence. And so what happens is, is through change boxes, happy meals, and special promos through the restaurants, all of those funds go through Ronald McDonald House Charities of Northeast Ohio. She then, with her board, and with the input from the co-op, disperses those funds into the local community, into many different charities that benefit families and children. We are one of those charities, as well as many others. So that is when you see granting by Ron McDonald House Charities, that's where those grant funds are coming from. It's a lot like the Bridgestone, how they will then funnel their funds out to a community. So we have an affiliation agreement with the charity arm in Northeast Ohio for a fixed amount that we're guaranteed every year. That fixed amount for us at our house is about three to four percent of our annual operating budget. And then the uh, Cleveland House will have the same affiliation. And on top of that, what we'll get is additional granting. So we can apply to the charity for additional grants. Um, we also will just receive them. We had a sprinkler head break um, about a year and a half ago, $100,000 worth of damage. And the charity said, here's 15,000. Uh, order your meals in for all those nights because our kitchen was a part of that destruction that we had. And so we'll get additional funding through that. And then we have owner operators who will do their own donations to us. Um, in town here, Rubber City Arches, that is run by John Blipple, um, donates all of our coffee supplies to us. And, you know, like, okay, that's nice, but like, I have no idea how that's nice. Never once in a day do I think, oh, geez, I made 20 pounds of coffee. And I know she wants some coffee, but I don't know. Like, honestly, it's, it, it's so powerful that I have a shelf in the basement, a regular in decaf and teas and sugar and sweetener, low, you know, all the different kinds of all the creamers in there. And when I run out, I call and I say, hey, Sally, could you send a truck with stuff? And she sent a truck with stuff. And I know uh, about a year ago, we had to uh, apply for a grant and they wanted to know some of the value on some of those things. And so we called John, you know, his office up, and we were like, hey, we figured he'd know, like, took a penny, right, what was donated, because that's a part of business. Um, we were like, how much did you donate to us last year? He's like, I don't know. And, you know, we don't really have a, you know, he doesn't even know, he doesn't even care. He just, we need it, he sends it. And then we've got a number of owner operators who will donate lunches to us, which is always a bad news for our families. And then the other thing through the McDonald's Corporation, is globally, we have a global headquarters in Oak Brook, Illinois. So the McDonald's uh, Hammer U, 
which is what they call, which is fabulous, which is where McDonald's operates, and then the charity arm also has its headquarters there, is that we will get global donors. And so Tempur-Pedic donated beds to all the houses in the United States and Canada a couple years ago. Coca-Cola donates all of the soda products to the house. Quarter a can through the week, free all weekend. Uh, we've had brand source that's of electronics and appliances, Lazy Boy, that's four pieces of furniture for every house in the United States and Canada. Uh, in the United States, we're talking about 180 houses around the globe, about 340. Uh, and so there's this huge support that even though financially the 3 to 4 percent it looks small, we have a large backing by them. But that's also part of our education process. Many people assume that when I need money, I call McDonald's or I call Akron Children's. And as much as I'd like to do that, that's just not realistic. And so it's a part of us educating about the positive relationship that we all share. However, we are much like a franchise. Cleveland House has to figure out how they need to make it work. I need to make, it, uh, make sure that we make it work here in Akron. Now, other markets are different. In Columbus, the charity and the house are together. They're all one unit. So in other markets, you can see 50% of operating budgets covered by McDonald's. 75, 30. It's all different depending on your market. Uh, we're happy in our market. We don't have any issues, and we really appreciate the support we get from our operators. Yes? Okay. I guess the other question I have is, what does McDonald's corporate office not not the franchise, the, the actual McDonald's itself, okay. worldwide global. Do, do they donate anything to um, McDonald's policy? Globally. So his question is more on a global standpoint rather well, than a local I mean, operators. what I'm saying is McDonald's is global wide. Yes. Do they, I mean, the global, I mean, the McDonald's corporate office, the main corporate yes. office, I'm not talking about the franchise. Not the franchise, but corporate. I'm talking about McDonald's corporate, the main owner of McDonald's. Do they donate anything to McDonald's? They, they don't donate directly, but they support like the global charity uh, representatives are McDonald's employees. So they basically pay for so our global staff. Basically corporate and uh, they support our, our infrastructure. They support, they support the franchises and the employees saying, you know, here, you know, kind of like with United Way. You work for a company, they say, you know, we're going to take so much out of your paycheck or whatever to get the United Way or whatever. And that. But what I'm, that, that was my question. Why doesn't McDonald's itself, I mean, as big of a corporation as they are, as worldwide as they are, and as big as they are, why can't they take a little bit out of their budget to help the Roman Catholic houses and ask, why, why, do they, why do they depend, or why do they put it on the franchises and the employees of those franchises to do it instead of taking a little bit out of their own pocket to do it on the table? You know, and they, they do support us in an infrastructure way that is huge support for us. So we don't we don't look at it as a bad thing at all. Um, I can answer how the, how they got structured and how they set up. But the charity arm itself is is a lot of connection to that. Now it's not again. I can't call them and just ask for money because you do want it to be local and self sustaining in a sense. And so it has to do with the structure. So our McDonald's support, even though it's not maybe like a a, a dollar for dollar type thing or that we were. They provide us with a global infrastructure that is worth a lot, that if I did not have my global office, which they basically do support, we couldn't be what we are. So they support it in, in a behind the scenes sense with it. When I need legal help, and when I need a, a global donor support, that that is there for me. So they give us resources, because each market is different and requires different resources. And so that allows us a little bit more freedom to run our house in Akron the way we need to compared to how they run it in San Diego. And so I think it is a good structure, right? See what you're saying. But it is a good structure to allow us some control 
but yet having a strong back. And, and that's how they support us. It is. It's good. Yeah. And I think part of this question, I get this all the time about the big corporation make a whole bunch of money. It's yes. a business. It has to run like a business. They have bills to pay. They do. Right. And they make a profit. Which is a bad thing, like all business. Right. But right. They can, that's part of it. They yeah. They can't afford to do what they can afford yes. to do like any other Yes. That's true. It's a very good point. Is it is. So that's what it comes down to. You know? And that's just as if, almost in the sense that we're a business. So even though we're a charity business, we still operate like a business that we have to make those tough decisions and that, you know, there are times that we get to ask to extend our mission um, in ways that we, we have to say, no, I'm sorry. You know, I may have the funds to do that, but that's beyond my mission. And it, it's hard um, to have those conversations to tell somebody you can't help them. So what we try to do is obviously give them resources of other places that could help them. But we have to draw the line and say, no, I can't give you money for that because that's not what people gave me money to do <laughs> so but that yeah. kind of answered my question the way she said it was right. you know they they don't give you the money but they do provide you with legal services or right. other right. services right. Yes. you know to help out that way that's right that's why we was trying to figure out was how corporate mcdonald yeah. helped out they give us a big big power to back whether it was money funding or you know how they did it, yes. you say you know they help you by putting you in touch with other people that will give you funding or are able to give you funding right. or give you the legal help or advice that you need, things like that. So Which like, is all good because I'd have to pay for that if I did, you know. So right. it is. It's strong and it's powerful. Right. Yeah. Another question. Yeah, can you, it's the majority of people are they own a lot from Akron, the Ohio area, or do you get a lot? Most of ours are outside of Summit County. We do serve Summit County. Um, I was just in a meeting yesterday at the hospital getting ready for a family to come over for a long stay in Summit County. Uh, their child has to have radiation daily and they only have one car. So dad can't get to work and get her to radiation in bed. So they'll be staying with us at the hospital even though they probably live within 10 minutes. Uh, and so we will serve Summit County families because Summit County is obviously a big supporter of us. So we feel it's important we serve those families. However, we see that it's a bit self-policing. If you live in Summit County and you can get home, you'd rather, right? Home is home, right? I mean, no doubt about it. Um, however, during critical period with your child, home is too far. Too far can be a half a mile. Too far can be four blocks. Too far can be almost across the street. We sometimes have trouble getting families to commit to coming across the street. Uh, and so we will usually get those families through their critical period, and then as they meet our other families and see where they're from, which is usually a lot further away than Summit County, and their child stabilizes, they turn their room. They say, you know what, I'm going home, I'm okay, we can make this work, and I know the Johnson family over there could use it a lot more than we can. And so it, it sort of self-polices. Um, otherwise, they come from all over. Um, yeah, you know, I think I, I said it was 23 safety, somewhere in that range, I'm trying to remember my stats. Uh, and then our stays, a lot of times people want to know how long do people stay? And it just depends. Uh, scheduled procedures, you're coming in, you're local, and you're getting maybe um, spinal fusion, or you're having a hip surgery on your child, or something like that, four to seven days. Come in, get your surgery, heal up, go on home, and everybody's great. Uh, and then we have another tier. Right now, about 50% of our rooms are locked down into three to six month stays which is another reason we back up. So, in the, you know, I've got right now, I'll have, as of tomorrow, nine rooms that are probably going to have somebody in them for three to six months. So I'm really working with 11 rooms to turn, which is not very many. And those families, a lot of times, are uh, pretty babies, little one or two pounders that need to stay in the hospital for multiple months to get stronger. Um, chemo, radiation treatments, bone marrow transplants. Uh, those kids, they'll get a bone marrow transplant and they're in the hospital for 30 days. And then they come live with us and their parents for about 60 to 90. And that's when they can be, they can't be further than 20 minutes away from the hospital in case rejection starts to occur. So those kids, which is challenging, those kids, uh, they live, okay, so for those of you that have kids, right, it's you and your kid, this close, for like 60 to 90 days. Because <laughs> you're in your little hotel room, you're eating in there, you're sleeping in there, you're playing in there because your child cannot go out into the community 
because of germs, because their immune systems are shot. And so literally, you are, oh my gosh. So by the end of, there's one in particular from Youngstown, but by the end of their stay, the transplant was the least of their worries. <laughs> and the mom, and we do, we'd be like, hey mom, come with me. And then we'd take the kid, we'd be like, okay, come on over here, we'll come hang out for a bit. They just needed to be separated. You know, and there was nothing more than a 15-year-old boy and his mom being too close for too long. So, so those are challenges. Now, in, in our uh, expanded house, we do plan to have both lane and range in eight to 10 long-term units, uh, which will be kind of like an embassy suite of it that way, a bedroom, and then a living space with, more, you know, like a little kitchenette type thing um, to allow those families a little bit more breathing room, uh, which will make that a lot better. But at least we can get them out of the hospital and we can keep them close. And that's also very comforting for the parents because, you know, after your kids have been through chemo and radiation and a bone marrow transplant, and they're like, okay, you're good to go. Your kid may be health-wise, but you're not. You know, you get used to that support of the hospital there, that any time, you know, there's a fever, or the kid looks a little funny, that they're there to be on it. And it, it's a really, we've seen a beautiful transition to give the parents confidence to then get home and be able to manage it. Yeah? You guys have, like, a uh, support group where parents come together without the kids? I mean, it's an easy to discuss it? You guys? Um, ours is very unstructured and just parent-driven. Okay. Anything like that, what we do, and this is at the request of the hospital, is that that routes all back through the hospital. Um, the social work department of the hospital likes to have the feel of, of sort of the comprehensive family care that's going on. And so they, if for something more official like that, then we do direct it back through them. Uh, but our families, one thing the hospital extends into our house that is really helpful to all family members, whether it's the patients or whether it's the siblings or the kids, is our therapy. So our therapy will come over and do art projects during our dinner hour sometimes which is sort of, again, it's a very low-key way of that kind of support and talk, uh, but it's not, you know, official or title in the sense of that. Yeah, yeah you know what? I mean, I told you I could go a long time. So I'm going to, I just, I brought some pictures because I want to show you the face of my house. So let me play my little slideshow for you. Uh, 
uh, bone marrow transplant family waiting for their rag to go home, mom and son. NICU family, they come back to visit when they have appointments, which is always awesome for us to see. That's my daughter and I. We found the new Ronald bench. That's the new style bench in Chicago on vacation. And like I said, we're just, you know, we're addicted to it. So I said, come on, come get our picture. Uh, JWCC has run a golf outing for us uh, for 31 years. One year before we began, they continued, which has always been our biggest fundraiser that they did for us, a lot like polar bear. And that was a, a transplant family that on her last day before going home made cupcakes for the house as a way of celebrating. So you can see these are just the families. They're just like us. You know, that's the other neat thing is that any single one of us, no matter what, no matter your background, no matter your history, no matter your job, no matter your that you end up down there. Uh, it's just one big melting pot and it's really neat to be able to meet and help uh, so many people. And so, yes? Do you expect to see a plan now during the pandemic? Do you expect to see not have a waiting list for a period? We hope to not have a waiting list for a period, but a lot of times what you'll see when you expand your house, Cleveland recently finished an expansion uh, from 37 rooms to 55. They're about a year, I'll call it about two years on that. And within a year, they had a wait list to get. And what, what happens is, is that there are more, there are a lot of families there where if they call and they ask, can I have a room? We say, we don't have one. They'll say, I'll forget it. So we know there's a whole segment in there that would take it if it was there. Um, I hope that we can run for some period of time without a wait list. I, I don't expect that it will be very long before we'll be back at this. Um, we also, with the plans, our architectural plans, it, we're trying to make sure to design future growth. The house we have right now was designed not for that. Like we can't, like we can't go up. You know, we can't easily. And so we hope that we maybe have some shell out space, or we have it where it's easy to then go if we do really continue to go. Uh, so yeah, that's a tough one for us. Columbus is the largest house right now with 137 rooms. They just finished that expansion about a year ago. And Cincinnati, we just got word, will be going upwards of 200 or more uh, in the next couple of years. And they're probably full. Cool. They're full. Cool. Full yeah. Yeah. yeah, they had about 40 on their list the other um, yeah. So it's amazing the, the, you know, healthcare is an interesting piece. I don't know a lot about it, but, um, and pediatric care, the growth of what, is available and the growth of what needs to be available is sort of, it's, it's a bit mind-boggling. Yeah. So ways to help, if anybody's interested, you are always welcome. Um, obviously, you know, donations of any kind, any kind goods are helpful for us to keep our snack tables filled. Uh, come in, cook a dinner with your group. Get your business involved. You know, sponsor a jeans day so you can give out cool little stickers so people get asking about what you're wearing your sticker for. Jeanette has some things she can walk around with too, some Free coffee coupons from our owner operators. <laughs> yeah, and, and all your promotions that they go through the restaurants, which is a great outreach for us. Uh, and you know, we well, I appreciate your time today. Uh, you know, the, the fact that you're even interested to come learn about all these things in your community is is just.